All right. Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a uh, episode of Gotham Sound Live TV. Um, we are here with Syntax as well, here, virtually here, with Syntax's Derek Badala. Hey, Derek, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? All right. Um, and so you're here to talk to us about Digigram's uh, audio over IP products. Correct. Doing reliable streaming in various forms uh, mm -hmm. using public internet. Uh, amazing. And so this has come up a lot with our customers where they have remote guests that need to contribute with high quality audio. Sometimes people are using Zoom for picture, but they need a higher quality audio. Um, yeah, and and so show us uh, show us what you what you guys got. Sure. So right behind me, you're going to see there's a couple of audio codecs. Uh, one is Digigram. One is a third-party codec that I use to do streaming over web radio. Also on my desk uh, here, and I'll switch cameras, I have an Akoya Talk, which is a portable codec. And we're actually connected to you, Peter. Uh, we're using uh, the internet. And we're going to kind of walk everyone through doing what we affectionately refer to as reliable audio over unreliable networks, which, mm -hmm. of course, in this case, is the Internet. Right. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. And, Paul, you all should be seeing a... Uh, oh, hang on one second. That's okay. Just want to make sure we didn't lose you. Yep, we got you. All right. And uh, so we're going to talk about some pro audio solutions in the streaming realm and kind of give everyone a little bit of a foundation. So first of all, who are we? Synthax. Who is Synthax? What are all these brands you see at the bottom of your screen? Well, essentially, Synthax is a worldwide uh, sales and marketing uh, division for RME, uh, an audio interface brand, converters, mic pre's, uh, something that I know Gotham has represented quite well for many years. Um, However, each office around the world has its own uh, autonomy to represent other brands. So here in North and South America, uh, where we're based here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, we also uh, represent Digigram, which is going to be a huge topic of today's webinar, and we do these other brands as well. Uh, we're in several markets with these products, um, broadcast, house of worship, live sound, etc. So we do quite a bit in a lot of different markets, but... Uh, Today, we're probably going to focus primarily on audio streaming. Uh, so in the audio streaming world, we're talking about broadcasts and connecting globally, using internet for global intercom, uh, connecting multi-points together, uh, using cell phones, using web codecs, using hardware codecs for conferencing and all kinds of cool applications. So. Without further ado, um, these are some other markets and technologies that we have, but we're going to talk mainly about streaming today. So we have solutions everywhere. Uh, Digigram has been doing this for well over 10 years. This company has actually invented a audio over IP technology you may have heard of before, which is called EtherSound. Uh, so they're not new to audio over IP. But as the industry has transitioned from ISDN connections to using just straight up IP, for doing radio and TV audio and streaming and multi-channel audio. Um, there's a lot of companies you probably recognize on this slide that use this technology. Um, Apple is one for sure that recently uh, picked up one of our uh, hardware codecs for doing uh, audio streaming. So if you're an Apple Music streaming subscriber, you're actually listening to Digigram. Uh, Digigram is a very powerful audio codec company and they invented uh, a product that I'm going to walk you through today. So key technologies in the streaming world, and most recently, they've introduced some IP cloud solutions that really tie the hardware, the software, the internet at home, on the go, all together. So uh, one diagram I like to use to sort of illustrate the ecosystem, the environment, the paradigm that we're in, is traditional broadcast. In traditional broadcast, you have the remote side, you have the studio side, and you have program distribution. So in order to have a complete solution, whether you're remote uh, broadcasting into a central location or you're trying to take audio from a central location and distribute it out to the masses, 
you're going to notice in my diagram, there's really only three or four products. They're just repeated in de several different places. That's because in a streaming environment, you might be in a remote broadcasting mode versus a distribution mode. The important takeaway here is that Digigram and their Fluid IP engine can do all of it. And we have things from a cell phone and connecting remotely with nothing but a computer, obviously hardware and portable. This is what Peter and I are using today. Peter has an Akoya talk on his end and I have an Akoya talk on my end and we're connecting um, to each other. So, and I'll let Peter describe that process and you know where you're gonna be able to hear that audio after we do this broadcast. Mm -hmm. So let's take it to Digigram in general. You know, Digigram has been used predominantly in traditional broadcasts for radio and TV for doing all kinds of unique remote uh, broadcasting and production all over Europe um, from a, a tricycle remote broadcast solution to doing several major sports commentary and sports events from the French Open, Olympics and uh, different uh, any kind of sports uh, event is an obvious place for using this type of technology. Uh, and given the portability of the technology, whether you have internet or not, or you're just using 4G, they have a solution for everybody. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. So let's get into what we're dealing with. Well, there's solutions in three major areas, transmission, connection, and distribution. The solution is going to apply to streaming point to point or point to many points remote to studio and studio to studio or studio to transmit or satellite and the customer for this type of technology is really a pretty wide gamut obviously traditional broadcast the distance learning challenge that's come up throughout the last four months has presented another opportunity for improving audio for things like zoom and other conference audio so music schools are a good example of this because they're struggling to teach online and have high quality audio we're providing solutions for that right now doing conferencing and remote translation where audio is critical house of worship and production studios where you want to broadcast many audio channels at once to another destination or many destinations Many artists and musicians are stuck at home trying to find better audio solutions for doing live streaming and also podcasting and recording production in general. Being able to record audio remotely using the internet as a mic cable and having high quality audio, which is exactly what we're doing for this webinar. Uh, Peter's using an Akoya Talk to re uh, record me from my uh, location here in Tampa up to his location. Um, so while we're using Zoom as the traditional conferencing platform, we're actually using Akoya technology for a better audio feed. And, and I know Peter's going to make that available to we'll you. We'll make those files available. Exactly. Yep. So here's our environment again. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, doing several different things at once. Now, I have up on my screen an audio interface. I have... Akoya Guest, which is a web codec. I have over here to my right side my portable codec. And what I want to do is I want to show you exactly how this all works and what makes Digigram unique. So as I kind of pull my um, PowerPoint presentation back up, we are going to show you first and foremost, I mentioned at the onset that I have hardware in my office and you can listen to a 24 seven stream at syntax.caster.fm because web radio is one such vehicle to broadcast out to the masses. You can give everybody a link or put a play button on your own website and now folks can listen to any audio that you're pumping into your codex. Um, a quick review of some of the solutions are not that many. There's really two. It's pronounced Icoya, Crosslink, <laughs> and Servlink. Mm -hmm. These are hardware codecs. Uh, you can put these in the studio. You can put these in a remote uh, situation. And what I've highlighted in red is really what differentiates these. At the end of the day, it's connectivity to your local audio sources, as well as how many codecs you're broadcasting over the internet. Many radio and TV will usually use some form of these crosslinks because they only need two or four channels of audio uh, at any given time. However, I've highlighted in gray the serve link because the serve link 
is just like a cross link. It's like having many cross links in a single rack space, and it can do from four to 64 stereo audio channels at one time to one point or many points. <laughs> and we can also use those in mono and literally connect a Dante network in New York City to a Dante network somewhere else in the world. And I'm gonna walk you through that. I already showed you kind of where it's been, where it's being used and it's now ST2110 compatible. And all of these codecs support all of the pro audio formats that we're accustomed to running into. So let's start with the serve link. Now the serve link is a high end scalable codec. You can use this with other hardware codecs from other manufacturers. You can use it with any of the codecs in the Digigram range, including software codecs that we're going to demonstrate for you. And the big idea here is that because it's multi-channel, it supports Dante and MADI and AES-EBU, and you can get it in all these different audio formats depending on what your specific needs are. It's also scalable, so it can actually connect it starts off as an eight channel codec and can actually connect to uh, up to 128 audio channels from point to point or point to many points. So I like to play a short little video so you kind of see it in a different type of way just to kind of open up people's minds. <laughs> So that's just one way in which that product can be used. We showed it, you know, just trying to exemplify the fact that we could have a large number of audio channels happening at one destination, I'm sorry, one original location and, and then stream it to multiple locations. Now in that example, we showed serve links in all the locations. And I'm gonna show you, yes, we can do that and we can use the internet as a channel count snake and there's certainly great applications where that is needed but i'm also going to show you how the serve link can be used with an akoya talk or an akoya guest and some of these other products where if you have nothing on the remote side just you at home with a laptop how we can connect into a serve link and do multiple guests at a time and do all kinds of neat um, remote contributions so that was just one example now the serve link as the name sort of suggests, it's kind of like a server. It takes a lot of channels and can stream it. You literally connect it to your internet, your internet service provider, bring in the audio and stream it somewhere else. And it can, and it's full duplex. So when you see those boxes communicating, those, those audio channels, those up to 128 channels are completely full duplex. Now I'm going to show you an Akoya talk, which is essentially, uh, a hardware codec, a cell phone, and a mixer all in one product. So it's an all-in-one solution that, like a serve link, can do multiple audio channels, Not obviously not as many, but it's very portable and has all of the connectivity and all of the benefits and features that you would need to do portable broadcasting and streaming. So it's an all-in-one solution. You can see from the picture, it's got mic inputs. You can see from my webcam uh, down in the small screen, 
that you have all of the connectivity and and local connections that you would want and all the control even for non-technical people and what we're doing right now for this uh, actual presentation to you is i'm using an akoya talk and connecting to another akoya talk now an akoya talk can also connect to a serve link or a software codec or an app codec so we'll walk through all of that but what i'd like to do is just show you a brief video on just sort of a, a nice overview of what this product is and how powerful it is. And as you can see, it comes with, you know, you can get it with a bag or even get it with a hardware, a hard case. That's my favorite application. Now I understand a lot of those those shots sort of imply, you know, radio or TV audio. But again, with what's been going on the last four months in our world, there's been so many other uses for this technology. And you can use this technology in parallel with conferencing systems like Zoom and do all kinds of other things. And we're going to walk through that. So basically, the setup looks something like this. You have your Koya talk somewhere. You can connect with 4 or 5G. You can connect with the built-in Wi-Fi. You can connect with the Ethernet. Um, there's a SIM card uh, platter in the back. You can actually load in uh, two SIM cards and bond them. You can also run them completely independent. One is primary and one is secondary. So you have a completely redundant stream, which is something very unique to Digigram because they're the one codec company that does 100% true redundant streaming where the actual audio stream takes two separate paths over the web to the destination. Now, in this example, we're showing a rack mount codec uh, in the studio. And it doesn't have to be a studio, it could be anywhere. And you could have multiple studios receiving the same broadcast. Um, now, in our example today, Peter has a talk. So if we were to sort of associate Peter's location as the studio, he has a talk on his end and we're doing a talk to talk connection. Right. And as the name suggests, there are there's a program side and a talkback side. So there's actually two independent stereo audio streams happening at the same time. Uh, talkback is obviously used more for your typical comms application where program is going to be where your main broadcast is. Um, this Akoya Connect uh, thing that you see in between is our SIP infrastructure. You don't have to use Akoya Connect, but Akoya Connect gives you a lot of added flexibility that I'm going to walk you through. And it also gives you third party interoperability. So I could use a Digigram codec with any third party SIP 
compatible product. So if you're using an intercom system, you're using comms, you're using another codec, if it can be registered on a SIP infrastructure, we can talk to it. Um, no pun intended, obviously. So the Akoya Talk is a very powerful box. It comes with a lithium ion battery on both sides. You can actually have two lithium ion batteries and get up to 12 hours of battery life. As you can see right here on the front, there's three independent mic inputs and there's actually four headphone uh, outputs. And those can be controlled by these soft buttons right here. The actual touch screen works very similar to a smartphone. And I'm gonna walk you through some of those uh, connections right now. So I'm gonna shift, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and that should bring up my Akoya talk for you. Let me just, uh, so I know the, the screen is a little washed out because you know we're using a webcam and it's always a challenge to get, yeah, that's worse. So let's just go with that. So on the main screen, I gotta shift my chair here. So right here, we have the ability to turn on our microphones uh, and basically the audio inputs will go right to the program for that. We have our headphone mix so we can pull in you know, what our headphone volume is. If we tap the switch, uh, we also can do a balance between the transmit and receive audio as well. I know it's hard to see because of the, of the uh, washed out screen because of the webcam. Now in our audio settings, this is where we set up our microphone inputs, our uh, you know phantom power. There's an auxiliary input so we can set the gain. We can also make it AES or line input. And I know you can't see it very well, but it actually reads mic line, mic line two, mic line three, and aux in. So this is where you set up your sort of your gain and, and trim and phantom power stuff. And on the outputs, you have your headphone uh, outputs, which you actually can just do on the tactile. So there's not really much reason to be here. And then your aux out, this is where you can set your line out um, to be feeding whatever. So you can add external mixers and you can also send the audio program to a pair of powered speakers. If you're in a, a room full of people or a, a venue and you want the mix to be heard by everyone that's physically there. Most of the time, though, you'll be in the live screen when you're connected. Before we go over the live screen, though, I want to show you the mixer. The mixer is where you're going to set up your what you're hearing in headphone one, headphone two, and headphone three. You have a left and right bus. You can literally connect uh, what the left channel and right channel are getting. You also have the ability to set how loud your individual mics are for your headphones. And again, I know it's hard to see because of the webcam, but it's pretty user-friendly for an audio person. So it should be pretty intuitive. Uh, Peter has one there. I mean, Peter, did you find it fairly intuitive? I thought it was great. We, we spent more time, uh, I spent more time futzing with Zoom than with this device. <laughs> That's true. Um, and then my aux out, this is what I can tell the aux out, you know, what, audio sources I want to feed out the aux out and then I can see my individual mixes. And again, if I, if somebody said, well, the, the program uh, receive is too hot, then we can just tap that. And, and of course I can use the slider with my finger or I can use the tactile button. It really doesn't matter. So that's 90% of what you're going to do on the main screen. But when you're actually streaming and broadcasting like we are right now, is I go to the live screen. Now you can see we're connected because it has the IP blue symbol and we're transmitting a program, which is what Peter is receiving in New York. Um, and I can, and I have a TX, that's the transmit meters. And then I have the RX, which is the receive meter. And I'm only doing the program side. I'm not even using the talkback side right now. And I can connect to another address and talk to Peter's talkback side and we could have intercom without it affecting what's going on air, but we're not doing that right now. Now, the other controls you see at the bottom, which is actually what Peter's doing on his side. So he's receiving my transmission and recording it. So he literally tapped the record button 
and the record light for him is live. And he's recording this entire presentation on the internal 64 gigabyte hard drive. And he's gonna connect the, his talk to his computer. He'll see the, the talk as a hard drive. He can grab that file and make it available to all of you so you can hear the audio quality of what the Akoya talk was capturing versus what the Zoom audio is capturing. Uh, is that right, Peter? Yeah, no, it's and it's really kind of amazing how uh, the difference in quality is. Yeah, and we've been connected, you know, probably what an hour before mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. broadcast. So we've we've been on air for two hours, no problems. Um, and again, just to complete the, the the tour of the screen over here on the bottom right is when you have a file that's already recorded, you can select it and you can choose all the different files that you want. So if I wanted to choose that file, no, we don't want to hang up. <laughs> Let's be careful. Um, I'm going to play the file for you. And now that file is not broadcasting to Zoom, but Peter is receiving it on yep. the recording. So you'll have that music file for a few seconds to kind of go, wow, all right, that's, that sounds really, really good. So I'm going to let that play just another five seconds. All right. So that is just getting around on the talk unit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back to my presentation. Oh, let me make a change. That's OK. Take your time. Let me know when we're good. I think we're good. Yep. OK. So that's the Akoya talk, kind of a uh, an overview. And again, it has all of the connectivities as standard, 4G, 5G ready, um, built-in Wi-Fi and dual Ethernet ports, which means if you have two Internet service providers, you can connect both Ethernet ports to two separate Internet service providers and have true redundant streaming that way. Or you could have the Ethernet port be the primary and the 4G be your backup. So either way, you're protected. Um, and we can do true redundant streaming and we can dial in and add error correction to the stream, which basically in layman's terms means we're taking the audio packets and duplicating them and sending the duplicate packets over the stream. And the decoder is looking at the original and duplicated packets and constructing the best quality stream based on that. So this is why in live broadcasting, Digigram is so widely used. All right, so let's talk about, as I promised, the last piece of the puzzle. We're going to tie it all together and show you application diagrams, and this is going to be really cool. So recently, Digigram introduced Akoya Connect, Akoya Guest, and Akoya Mobile. These are all cloud services, just like Microsoft Office. You know, you can subscribe to this um, with software as a service. And everything's in the cloud. So you have nothing to install. It also makes it very easy for your guests who might be non-technical to participate in your streams. So I want to start with where they are in the environment. So Akoya Connect is essentially the blue dotted line that you see. All these internet connections. Akoya Connect is there, sort of sort of like how Dante runs on AS67. Akoya Connect runs on the internet and it gives you a high quality connection. It comes free when you buy a hardware codec. So if you call up Gotham, you say, hey, I want to get an Akoya talk, you're going to get two Akoya Connect connections at no charge. In its basic form, it allows you to, to make connections very easily without having to know the public IP address of anything. You can literally, it's almost like a URL. You register your hardware on Akoya Connect, you get a username and password, you log in, you, you have a codec number, and it's almost like an email. So I can call, I can put in like an email address, codec1 at sip.yourname.com, and that is registered to this box. And we registered Peter's uh, talk on our SIP, on our Akoya Connect account, and we just literally dialed, we just put in like an email address. It's so I don't have to know the public IP address of Gotham Sound's uh, internet service. And yeah, there was no firewall configuration for us to get these two boxes to talk to each other. Yeah, it was it was you know pretty simple, and I think on Peter's side he just simply had DHCP and probably UDP is enabled on your your mm -hmm. internet there. Yep. 
Um, but if you want to get in there and make a, a, a static IP and all that, you're certainly welcome to do that. So Acquire Connect in its basic form is going to give us simple connecting connections without having to know static IPs. And it's going to give me third party interoperability. So if you're using a Koya Talk with a third party uh, system, I don't care if it's Intercom, I don't care if it's another codec company, as long as you can register it on a SIP, we can talk to it. So in my office, I have a Comrex access and I can register that on my Akoya Connect and I can have the Akoya Talk speaking to the Comrex and the Digigram simultaneously. Pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Now, Akoya Connect has some additional services that you can subscribe to, as the name might imply that, as you see here on the slide, I can manage the codex remotely, I can monitor quality of service, and do some more powerful things if I need to. It's not necessary, but if you need that level of control and that level of visibility, it's there for you to um, for a nominal annual registration fee to do it. Um, and for more information on that, you can just contact Gotham on that one. Now over here to the left is Akoya Mobile and Akoya Guest. Akoya Mobile and Akoya Guest are remote codecs, don't require any hardware. Um, Akoya Guest is pretty simple because at the end of the day, all it really is is a link, a web URL that you put into your web browser and the codec uh, software is loaded into your web browser from the cloud. Uh, so there's nothing to install. So if you're doing interviews or working on a TV show and you have multiple people that need to coordinate and collaborate with high quality, secure audio, they could all just have a unique web link and that could connect to a serve link or a multi cross link in, in a remote location. Um, so, and I'll get into some different applications of that when we show our little diagrams. Akoya Mobile, essentially is an app version because on a smartphone, iOS or Android, the web browsers are limited in terms of how they interact with the OS. So we designed an app codec that you can download from the app store uh, for Android or for iPhone, and it turns your smartphone into a high quality codec. Also, you'll notice this little Q mic because we have a little preamp, and I'll show you a slide on that in a moment that will actually give you the ability to connect your headphones, ear, earphones, I, IEMs, and a high quality dynamic microphone um, to your smartphone for even better quality. All right. So that's sort of the overview. As I kind of touched on, Akoya Connect is free, but if you need management, uh, more statistics of monitoring and remote control, you can subscribe to one or all three of those services uh, and control your entire infrastructure remotely. And uh, guests and mobile, I kind of already described. So Akoya Connect is literally just getting on a laptop or computer or desktop uh, opening up a web browser and connecting to your account and you can see the entire infrastructure. It might look something like this, where you can see the various codecs, you can see which ones are connected, you can get quality of service, you can initiate and hang up connections from this interface. You don't have to be at the actual units themselves if you don't want to be. So it's pretty powerful. And like I said, it's sort of like a good, better, best um, subscription, depending on the level of control and the level of power that you're looking for. If you're simply doing a one codec to another connection and that's about it, you probably wouldn't need this level of enterprise um, control, but just know that it's there. So those are the web applications. Now what I'd like to do is sort of go over a Koya Guest and a Koya Mobile. Koya Guest is a web codec. This is simply a link that you get with your Koya Connect. When you subscribe to a Koya Guest, um, which is an annual or monthly subscription, it's very inexpensive, you get a link that's pre-configured and you can customize that link in future updates of this software. So you get a link, you can send it to somebody and then they can co connect to your codec, whether your codec is hardware or software. In this example, in this screen, we're showing a web, like a laptop connecting to a crosslink. It could be a laptop connecting to a talk. Um, it could be a laptop connecting to a laptop running a Koya guest. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through all those different things. So, 
In New York, we actually have uh, DNR Studios uses a Koya guest, and they can literally run an entire radio show from nothing but a web browser. Um, you open up the web browser, you put in the link, it downloads the software, and the web browser software even has a little mixer, almost like a cart machine. So what it looks like is what you see here. You have a microphone, which can be your built-in mic, can be the external uh, mic input of the computer if it has one, or it can be your audio interface. And then whatever is going on in your audio interface settings is what will be seen here. And then you have almost like a cart machine. You have the ability to preload files into the other two channels. You can queue them up. You can monitor them by clicking the ear. You can control the level. So literally inside a web browser, I could run an entire show, which is pretty powerful. Um, you simply connect by hitting the call button. And because this is registered on your Akoya Connect, whatever hardware is registered to that codec number is what it's going to connect to. So if I wanted to connect to Peter's Akoya Talk, I bring up the Akoya guest link that is assigned to that codec number. And by simply hitting the call button, it will connect to his hardware codec as well. But, and you can go browser to browser, though. You don't yep. need hardware. So that's your, your one, oh, sorry, you're sorry. 10 sorry. seconds ahead of me. No, it's all good. So there's actually three types of connections here. You can do a Akoya Connect to Akoya, sorry, Akoya Guest Browser to the Guest Browser. It's $49 a month. That's the street price. Um, and you can get that subscription for, through Gotham. And this is a one-to-one -one connection. Full duplex, high quality, very secure. So if Peter and I were doing something and he wanted to record me um, and we wanted to use the internet as a mic cable with talkback functionality, this is what we would do. And we'd have a very high quality connection. So instead of using Derek, Zoom and Skype. Stereo? It. Would it be stereo? It can be stereo or it can be mono. So I'm going to actually do a live demonstration of that. So you have the flexibility to do stereo. And if I have a nice audio interface on both ends of this connection, then I have all the flexibility that that audio interface gives me, being able to play DAW audio or capture audio into my DAW, both mono and or stereo. Very powerful. I also can do a Koya guest to a Digigram hardware codec. So I might have a hardware codec at one end. In this example, Peter's got an Akoya Talk, um, which gives me some added flexibility that I don't get using software only at that end, and I can connect as well. I also can do to third-party codecs because we're using Akoya Connect. So as long as we register our third-party device, again, it doesn't have to be an audio codec. It could be a comm system. It could be There's a lot of products in the AV industry that can be registered to a SIP infrastructure. So the, the, the possibilities get pretty cool when you start to think about that. In all of these examples that I'm showing you right now, it's it sort of implies like one-to-one. -one. But what about doing multiple guests at a time? Absolutely, we can do that. Um, in this setup, you need to have hardware on one end. We can't do strictly cloud uh, connections when we do this, I'm trying to find my mouse here and I don't want to, there we go. Um, so we can have, this person has a link, maybe they're in New York, this person is in Chicago. They each connect and they are connecting to individual channels of my hardware codec. Peter asked a moment ago if it could be stereo. Yeah, my if, as long as my hardware codec can accommodate multiple connections at once or I have multiple hardware codecs in the studio, I can do that. The way that would work in a Digigram environment would look something like this. This is where the serve link becomes extremely powerful because if I have a serve link at my studio, with which and depending on how many IOs I'm, I, I got with it, I can do eight, 16, 24, all the way up to 128. I can have all of these guests tied into one or two channels, whether it's mono or stereo, and record all of them. So. Maybe I'm doing a TV show, a reality TV show. I've talked to some uh, Netflix and Hulu, uh, Hulu folks, and they want to be able to record remote people um, at the same time into their DAW. Now I'm going right now. I'm showing it with you with a Koya guest, but imagine if these were smartphones, and we're going to show you that. So literally, instead of using a web codec in a browser, it could be your smartphone with running a Koya mobile. And then each person in a reality TV show can be recorded 24-7 by simply they're, they're walking around with a smartphone on their belt and it's broadcasting back to 
um, a serve link, which is recording multi-track into a DAW and getting all of that content. It's just one example of how it could be done. Which is great when you're using Zoom as the video and backup comms, uh, but then you get this high quality audio from yep. each location. It's fantastic. And it's full duplex. Uh-huh. It's not one way. It's completely full duplex. Now, we've done some distance learning stuff where, you know, music schools and audio centric uh, curriculums need better audio connections than what Zoom will provide. So we can do a Koya guest in parallel with Zoom. So we put a serve link at the university um, and we can, sorry, I advanced that too early. We can actually have multiple students connect to a class at one time, or we can do one on one music instruction. Very powerful stuff. So what I'd like to do because, is. Because, uh, sorry, Derek, because the latency is low enough. For music instruction yeah and i'm not promoting that as a as a everybody jam at once mm-hmm. but it is good enough for the conductor to have everybody play and then you know the conductor is hearing all the audio uh kind of together but obviously everybody's individual internet connection is unique and is going to introduce some level of latency that is unpredictable so let me show you what this looks like to the end user in other words, you as a person using a Koya guest in a web browser and kind of what the experience is like. So I'm gonna let me play this for you. Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna to show you how fast and easy it is to use a Koya guest. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our Koya guest link. Actually, I noticed that our um, our PowerPoint got turned around. So let me uh, swap displays here. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. Let's try that again. Oh, I don't. Uh, I don't think we hear any audio. Yeah. Well, I'm not playing it. Hang ah. On. All right. Good. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to show you how Should fast audio now. and yep. easy it is to use a Koya guest. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our Koya guest link that's been provided. We will get a green call button, which means we're ready to make the call. We have a mute button, mixer, and settings. I'm going to go stereo with the best quality setting. I'm going to elect not to use any DSP. I will activate my mixer, use my audio device that's connected, load some music files. Get a good mix. We can listen to our files and we can turn broadcasts on and off. We will be broadcasting, so we'll have all those on. You can see my mic. Set a level of my music. Do the same down here. Okay, once I'm ready to go, I can queue up my music to wherever I want, make the call. We're now connected and we're broadcasting. If I wanna hear my microphone in my headphones, I can simply hit the, the listen button, start the music, and then control the mix in real time as we broadcast. If we wanna loop music, we can do that play our other piece and it's that simple thanks for watching so that's a pretty pretty simple interface for something that you know you're going to send to somebody who might be non-technical at a minimum they'll connect with their mic and they have at least the flexibility to control the level of their microphone without having to get into the operating system of their computer to adjust levels and stuff like that Um, the last piece of the puzzle as promised Akoya Mobile Akoya Mobile works on an Android, iPhone, uh, or iOS in general, so for iPads. And you'll notice in this picture, she's holding a little preamp with her left hand, which is also the QMic preamplifier. So Akoya Mobile is pretty cool because it gives you not only the connection capability that you just saw me demonstrate with Akoya Guest, but it has the built-in recorder too. So I can record to the internal hard drive of my smartphone and would allow me to record an interview, say offline, and then broadcast it later. So if you're a podcaster, this is a great little solution for you. Um, but you can also play the recording on air and comment over the playback, which is gives you ultimate flexibility. Um, and it has a program side and a receive side. So it's kind of like a talk as well. So it's pretty powerful. And again, you would register this on your SIP 
and it would connect back to a serve link, a cross link, a talk, a Koya guest, or even a a Koya mobile to a Koya mobile. Of course, if you're going to do that, you might as well just make a phone call. Um, but you get the point. Now, the Q mic is just this nice little no battery design um, little piece that you can connect to the, the mini plug uh, of your headphones on your smartphone. And even if you have a iPhone, whatever it is, 10 and above, where you're using the dongle, uh, it's fine. It still works. And it just allows you to have higher gain and, and better pro audio uh, connected uh, connectivity to the smartphone for, you know, especially if you're like a journalist or you're doing something and you just want better audio than what the built in handset or speaker is going to give you. Um, now, so this entire ecosystem is like a one IP solution. So, you know, we've sort of walked you through Akoya Talk. We've, we've walked you through. Akoya Mobile, we've walked you through the different hardware, and they all do the same thing, just in different form factor, really. And Akoya Connect is at the heart of it if you need it. So what are some of the applications that you can do? What, what can we achieve? So in the world of Gotham Sound, you might want to just do Akoya Guest to Akoya Guest and be able to you know connect people remotely if they have an audio interface, even better. And now you can have a two, uh, uh, essentially, you know, do a voiceover session or record somebody remotely in very high quality. You also could do and it. Derek, I would just throw in uh, with a Koya guest, you're not limited to the sound card. The sound card could be Dante virtual sound card, right? Yeah, it could be any, any audio interface be because, in fact, this is a good time to pull it up. So let me... Right now, you should see my Akoya guest on your screen. And I've put in a link, which actually will connect to Peter's talkback side of his Akoya talk. I haven't, I won't call it yet, but there's my microphone. And when I activate the mixer, I get a little pop-up that will ask, do you want to use Dante Virtual Sound Card? Do you want to use the internal microphone? If you have an RME interface, you'll, you should see it if it's all installed properly. Mm -hmm. You also have in your streaming options, because Peter, you asked earlier if you could do mono or stereo. So this is where you would make that selection. Uh, you also can choose quality. And if you're by any chance don't have a, a headphones and you're using your microphone, built-in mic and built-in speaker, say on your laptop, you want to minimize any echo between the speakers bleeding into the mic, this is where you would make that choice. Um, and you can load in different files. <laughs> Hang on, I was getting a cell phone call. And play them. Uh, so you should be able to hear these now. And if, and if I didn't want to hear it in my headphones, I could just turn that off. Mm -hmm. I also can loop it. And I can do a mix between the different things. So this is a classical one. And the reason I like to vary up the music is because a lot of times in a conference software like Skype or Zoom, music just gets butchered. So this is a great way to uh, do it. Now, if I wanted to call uh, Peter's talk, I just hit the call button. And now I've just initiated a call. I should be connected oh, on yeah. his talkback side. Yeah. And I know that on my end as the guest user because I have a red hang up. And if I just hang up the call, I do that. And now we're no longer connected. Yep. So very, very powerful. So now, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say one use of this that I can see is uh, I could really see it being used when you have multiple participants um, tied together and you're going back um, to one place or let's say... I assume we'll be able to shoot this at some point. Um, you're trying to bring in an actor, um, even if you're not shooting them, for reaction. And now you can bring them into the sound cart, route them via an earwig to the actor, and be recording them in very high quality. Yep, exactly. Um, this slide, while it's labeled university application, could be any combination of things. That serve link can be in your studio, and it can be Dante, Maddie, AES, analog, um, and you can connect it to your audio interface or your DAW and capture all of these people 
And you know, if you're using like a DigiFace Dante with the with the uh, instead of Dante Virtual Sound Card, then you have the flexibility of Total Mix, and now mm -hmm. you can do all the mix minuses in a virtual domain and not have to use a physical mixer. Um, and of course, I could do Maddie as well, um, which in some ways can be powerful with a Fireface because the Fireface doesn't have to be connected to a computer uh, to function. The the Total Mix w runs right inside the Fireface directly, which is pretty cool. Um, so we've done a lot of different things with this. Now, while this slide is showing a Koya guest, which is implying people are on computers or laptops, these could also be a mix of a Koya mobile. So you could have people just on smartphones walking around with microphones mic'd up and everybody's captured here. And then, of course, with the UFX, you could even using the Durek feature, you could just capture internally. Mm -hmm. um, pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, we've done music school applications. We've done unified systems. We've done multilingual applications where you have people uh, listening to something in one language and then with a Koya guest.